everybody, my name is Elisa McCall and I'm with Polar Bears International and today I'm talking to polar bear scientists and sitting with me right now is Pat. Pat, can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do? Sure, well my name is Patrick Mislam and uh, I'm a polar bear scientist here at the University of Alberta where I'm doing a master's degree with Dr. Andrew Duroche studying polar bear stress. How can we possibly know when a polar bear is stressed out? Well, interestingly, polar bears get stressed out the same way that we get stressed out. And when they get stressed out, they release a certain hormone into their bloods. And it's the very same hormone that we release, and it's called cortisol. And what happens when polar bears are regrowing their hair, the cortisol that's in their blood is also incorporated into the hair shaft itself. So, we have samples of polar bear hair. They look like this here. They're in these little baggies. You have a lot of samples. And we've got <laughs> lots of samples. So, here's just one bag. Adult males from 2005 alone. I have a bin behind me here with at least 1,200 samples in it. So by analyzing the amount of cortisol that's in the hair, we can tell how stressed is that bear relative to other bears. How much cortisol is in the hair that's grown already. So Pat, polar bears don't have a job to go to, they don't have bills to pay, and they don't have a thesis to write. So what causes stress in polar bears? <laughs> So even though we talked about how polar bears get stressed the same way we do, what stresses them out is slightly different. Now polar bears are mostly focused on survival and reproduction. And both of these things can be very stressful for a bear. Mm -hmm. And in particular, they're, they're stressful because they have an influence on the body condition of an animal. Okay. And some of the results that we found in our study is that body condition and cortisol, so stress, are very closely linked. Mm -hmm. So the less fat that a bear has from hunting, the less successful hunter it is, the more likely it is to be nutritionally stressed. Because in Western Hudson Bay in particular, bears are forced onto land between the time that the ice melts in the spring and the time that the ice reforms in the fall. During that time, they're entirely dependent on their own fat reserves that they've collected that past winter and spring to survive. So, when you have a bear that's, that's really, really skinny going off that ice and onto land during the summer, that bear is much more likely to be stressed, and that stress is something we measure in their hair. Uh, and then, this body condition can be influenced by other things. In particular, we found that the reproductive status of the individual can have an effect. Uh, females that are nursing cubs or caring for dependent offspring are shown to actually have higher stress levels. As you can imagine, it's Makes stressful sense. to raise those cubs. Yeah. So they can be a little bit more stressed out. Likewise, we find that older bears, bears that uh, are, are in poorer body condition just because they're, they're close to the end of their lifespan, uh, those bears can also uh, show higher stress levels in their cortisol, in their hair. Makes a lot of sense. It does. Hmm. Okay, so we know polar bears get stressed and we know that we can measure that, but why do we care or why do we keep studying this? Well, there's short-term effects of stress and there's long-term effects of stress. In the short term, stress can be very adaptive. Um, if a polar bear is threatened, it needs to be able to um, be able to fight or, f or run. And, and that's what short term stress does. It's a very adaptive response. But what happens is when you have a stress response over a very long period, or what we call chronic stress, you get some very maladaptive effects. And some of those maladaptive effects include reduced reproduction, uh, reduced polar bear growth, immunosuppression, more, more susceptibility to disease, uh, and even a, a reduced uh, like cognition. So there, there's a lot of different effects of chronic stress, and, and it's in interesting for us to know, um, just for the overall health of the population, how many chronically stressed individuals do you have in a population? The more there are, the more likely their body condition is influenced, the more likely their reproduction is influenced. So hmm. cortisol in hair is kind of a new thing, but it's something that's gaining some steam, especially because hair can be collected non-invasively which is fantastic. Classic, um, mm -hmm. class, classic approaches for collecting samples from polar bears involve darting from helicopters, um, sedation in the field, etc. But what happens with hair is it, sometimes it could be collected with hair snags, which are just barbed wire, kind of barbed wire traps uh, nearby to a bait. And when, when a bear walks by, a little bit of hair gets snagged in the barbed wire. And there we go. There's all the information and all the sampling we need. What does this mean big picture? What does your research mean for polar bears and like, why bother studying stress? Okay, so we've already talked about some of the health effects of chronic stress. And the more stressed bears there are in a population, likely the less healthy that population is. 
Now, we've studied some polar bear subpopulations a lot more than we have others. And one of the best studied one is Western Hudson Bay, right near the town of Churchill. Uh, we have lots of samples from there. We've been looking at those bears for a very long time. So the more we know about them, the more we can take methods established there and apply those to other populations that are less accessible, um, they're, they're, they're just less studied, they're not really near uh, any sort of major uh, study area like Churchill. Well, it seems like there's a lot we can learn from studying polar bear stress, so thanks for talking to me today. If anyone out there has questions for Pat about what he does or what he studies, uh, please email me at questions at pbears.org, and I'll pass your question on to Pat, and hopefully we can follow up with even another video this summer or something. Absolutely. It was great chatting with you guys today. Thank you for talking with me, Elisa, and um, I hope to hear from you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Pat. Bye-bye.